Hello students, in this video we are going to learn that how to solve the block problems using Newton's second law. In this question we have two blocks A and B of masses M1 and M2 respectively are placed on a smooth horizontal table connected by a light string. This string which is connected between them is light. Light means very less amount of mass or negligible mass. If the block A is pulled by a force F as shown here, a horizontal force F, then find the acceleration of the blocks and the tension in the string. So, first of all, it is very clear that if this system is being pulled by the force F and these two blocks are connected by a string in between them, then the both of them should move with the same amount of acceleration. Both the blocks A and B should move with the same acceleration. Now let us start the solution of the problem. For any kinds of such problems in Newton's second law where blocks are connected, the step number one is always to draw the free body diagram of the blocks. So here I have shown the two blocks M1, M2 which are separated from each other. We are not showing the string which is in between them. And we have also separated them from the table surface so that we can show only the force which is acting on M1 and M2. So, take the block M1, a force F is already acting on it. In addition to that, gravitational force will be acting vertically down on the block M1 as M1 into G. And similarly, on the block M2, the force will be M2 multiplied by G. This is due to the gravitational force of the earth. The force is always vertically down. Then, secondly, these two blocks will press the ground because they are placed on the table or the ground. They will press the table downwards with uh, normal reaction forces. Let us say call them N1 and N2. So, these two blocks which are kept on the table, due to their weights, they will press the table downward with these forces N1 and N2 shown here. So, according to the Newton's third law, both of these blocks will experience the same amount of reaction force from the table in the opposite direction, that means in the upper direction. So, the both the blocks press the table down with the normal reaction forces. So, the table will exert same amount of upward force on the blocks as the reaction. Then, lastly, in between the two blocks, we can see that a string is connected here in between the two blocks. When the string becomes tight, then a tension T will get developed in the string. And this tension will pull both the blocks. So, the string would pull the block M2 to the rightward direction and it will pull the block M1 to the leftward direction. Here, a very important statement should be made here. Regarding the tension force, we should note down here that the tension force always pulls. Tension always pulls. It cannot push. Tension always pulls. So, based on this only, you can see in the figure that we are drawing the direction of the forces due to the tension force. On the body M2, the tension force is rightwards. On the body M1, tension force is leftwards. Why is it so? Because the string which is connected here after becoming tight, it will pull both of them. So, M2 will be pulled this side and M1 will be pulled this side by this string. That is why these are the directions of the tension forces acting on the two blocks. So, now our free body diagram is complete. And lastly, just one last touch will give to the figure. That will say that the two blocks are having accelerations A and B. Both of them will move with the same acceleration A because this string which is connected here is inextensible. The string is inextensible. What do we mean by inextensible is that the length of the string is not extendable. That means the length cannot increase. The length of the string will remain constant. If the length of the string will remain constant, 
then the distance between the two blocks will always remain constant because of which both of them must move with the same amount of acceleration since the distance between them should remain constant now our free body diagram is complete and we must now go to the step number 2 the step number 2 for newton's second law problems is that we write down the newton's law of motion which is this f is equal to ma along x direction and y direction separately we will write down independently along x and y direction now here the force which is acting along x direction say that the total force sigma means summation summation of all the forces which are acting in the x direction must be equal to the mass of the body multiplied by its acceleration along the x direction so if you will use this equation x direction equation for both the blocks one by one let us say first is choose the block m1 on the block m1 this equation will be like this you see in this block the force F is acting in the positive x direction and tension T acting in the negative x direction. So, the total sigma of the force along x direction must be written as F and minus T. F positive and T is negative. This must be equal to the mass, mass is m1 and multiply with acceleration along x direction. So, the x component of acceleration is A. We we'll write down here. Same thing we do for the block M2 also. Same we can do for the block M2. In case of M2, as you can see that along the x direction we have only the only one single force tension T only. So the total sigma of the Fx will be only the tension T and is equal to the mass of the body which is M2 multiplied with the acceleration A, which is F2. Let us call these two equations as equation number one and equation number two. From these two equations, we can actually find both of our unknowns. What we will do here is that, after we have found our two equations, equation 1 and here is our equation number 2. So, let us do one thing for solving the problem. Add both the equations. If you add both the equations, adding 1 and 2, adding the equation 1 and 2. So, you will add the LHS of both sides. So, LHS of the first equation is F minus T and plus the LHS of second equation T. On right hand side, we will add both the terms. You will get M1A plus M2A. So, in this manner, we have added both the equations. LHS added with LHS, RHS added with RHS. After doing this, we can clearly see that tension and minus tension, they cancel each other. And uh, on the left side, we are getting F. Whereas on the right side, we can take A common. Then after taking A common, we will get in the bracket M1 plus M2. Therefore, from this equation, therefore, acceleration A comes out to be the force F divided by the sum of the masses M1 plus M2. So, in this way, we got our first answer that acceleration of the system or the acceleration of the blocks will be given by a is equal to f upon m1 plus m2. Secondly, in this question, you are asked that we also have to find out the tension in the string. What is the tension in the string? So, as I said, our both equations 1 and 2 are sufficient to get two answers. So, first answer we have obtained for acceleration. Now, from the second equation, we can clearly see that tension T is equal to just the product of m2 into A. From there, we can find out so, I will write here from the equation number 2, from equation number 2, we are getting tension T is equal to M2 multiplied by A means this above quantity. So, divided by M1 plus. So, we have found our answer. So, students, finally the problem is solved. Acceleration and the tension in the string has been calculated. I hope that you like the method. So kindly please like the video and press the subscribe button also. I will be thankful to you.